everyone, Mr. B here, and it's time to play my favorite game of Episodic or Semantic. But before we get started, let's do a quick little recap, because this whole thing has to do with long-term memory. And if we look at long-term memory, we can break it down into two main types. You got your declarative memories, and you got your procedural memories. With declarative memories, it has to do with things that, well, we declare. It's conscious effort. It's stuff that we have to recall, like facts of personal experiences. Now, with procedural, this is stuff that doesn't really take any conscious effort. We don't really have to think about it. It just kind of happens. It's things like habits or motor behaviors, like riding a bike. Now, for the sake of this game, we're not really going to focus on procedural. But if we look at declarative memories, we can break it down even further, where we have episodic and semantic, which is where the game begins. With episodic memories, these are the personal long-term memories, so things that relate specifically to yourself and your own experiences. If we look, though, at semantic memories, these are general facts, general knowledge that anyone can have once they learn it. It doesn't necessarily relate to the individual. So now we're going to play the game, where I'm going to be showing you, or rather, Mr. B will be showing you various scenarios, various memories, and it's going to be up to you to decide if it's semantic or episodic. So let's look at our first memory. So I was watching a cooking channel once, and I learned that a single strand of spaghetti is called a spaghetto. <laughs> <laughs> so this was an example of a semantic memory, because it doesn't really matter who you are, a single strand of spaghetti will always be known as a spaghetto. It's not a personal memory. So let's take a look at that next memory. You know, I remember learning that there's more Lego miniatures on this planet then there are people. Now this was another example of a semantic memory, because again, this is just a general fact of the world. Nothing more to say. Let's go on to that next memory. For my birthday one year, my brother got me a giant Rainbow Dash plushie. So this is the first example of an episodic memory, because what you got for your birthday might be different from what I got for my birthday. So this is a personalized memory, and therefore, episodic. Let's look at that next memory. <laughs> Did you know that the voice actor for Spongebob and the voice actor for Plankton's computer wife are actually married in real life and have been since 1995? I learned that watching TV today. S is because it's semantic memory, because it's a fact of the world. I can't think of another way to rhyme, so let's just go ahead and look at that next memory. Thinking back on my childhood, I've always grown up around cats. Now this one is an episodic memory because, of course, the pets that you grew up with are going to be different from the ones that I grew up with. Let's take a look at that next memory. You know, thinking back on today, I've had a good day. Now, while I hope that you're having a good day like I am, this is still a personalized memory, because everyone's feeling differently, experiencing the day differently, and so this is an episodic memory. Let's go ahead and look at that next memory. Did you know that the company that makes Sour Patch Kids and the company that makes Swedish Fish are actually the same company? And so, the red Sour Patch Kid and Swedish Fish are actually identical? 
except that Sour Patch Kids have that sour sugar on them. Huh. I always thought they tasted similar. And so this is another example of a semantic memory, because again, it doesn't really matter where you come from, all around the world, the fact is still the same. So let's go on to that next memory, and it's a bonus round. Now, I'm not in charge of the bonus round. Who we need is Mr. B. Thank you, Mr. B. No problem. And so my question relates to something we talked about at the very beginning of the video. And the question is, what kind of memory are the ones that are habits and motor behaviors like riding the bike and playing the piano? So what kind of a memory was this? All right, hopefully you got it. And thank you, Mr. B. So this was an example of a procedural memory. Because again, it doesn't take much con conscious effort once you know, like riding a bike or playing the piano. And that is it for our game round. Hopefully you did well on semantic or episodic. I'll see you guys next time.